Well, joining me now is the former Conservative Cabinet Minister, David Mellor. Welcome to you. You know Malcolm Rifkin well. Do you think he's done the right thing in ending his political career? Probably. I mean, I'm very sad. And he, Malcolm's the last person on earth you would have expected to have fallen for this. I mean, if someone said to me, describe Malcolm, I would say very intelligent, very experienced, but also very cautious. I can't imagine whatever made him uh, accept the blandishments of these people when a relatively limited amount of checking would have established that they weren't quite who they said they were. And after all, in politics, we're used to people who aren't quite what they say they are, aren't we? But also, I think that um, for him then to open up in the way that he did to them, I found astonishing, you know, because M Malcolm was just not that kind of guy. But I'm very sorry, because, you know, everyone is now going to forget all the good things he did, the wonderful things that he did. He was a great asset to the Tory party, and all they will do is think of this. And it's not going to do any good for the general reputation of politics and the general anti-politics mood. Well, didn't you think it was noticeable as Faisal Islam was going around talking to constituents you know, nobody had a word of good to say, although Malcolm was one of the more distinguished members of Parliament. And I think we have to accept the public are so fed up with politicians, so used to these antics, that they have no, they will never ever say, oh, but actually he's quite a good fellow. Did anyone ever say that? It didn't, you see. What about this basic question, though, of second incomes or other jobs for MPs, has that had its day? Is it well, it would sadden me if it, it did. I'm an unreformed advocate of the fact that the, in the old days, members of Parliament went to Parliament because they were pillars of their community. They were either, you know, leading trades unionists or they were the lord of the manor or whatever. And there was nothing wrong with people going to Parliament, not as a way of making a living or having a career, but as an act of public service. What seems to me to be sad is if people who genuinely have a life outside politics are not allowed to continue to live it, thereby bringing into the chamber experiences of the world. You know, the trouble with all of this is, you know, experienced men like Jack Straw and Malcolm Rifkin, each one of whom is two or three times, I don't know, say Ed Miliband. But Ed Miliband, the kind of Ed politician Ed Miliband is, or David Cameron. David mm. Cameron had a brief period as a PR man uh, for an ITV company. Ed Miliband really had nothing, has never done anything but politics. Yeah, but, but I don't think anyone could deny that Jack Straw and Malcolm Rifkin are both professional politicians. That's what they've spent most of their adult life doing, although uh, Malcolm Rifkin did lose his seat at, 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 yeah. at one stage. They rose to be cabinet ministers when they didn't have outside interests. Yeah. And so there's this sense of, at the end of their careers, of, of, of quotes cashing in. Yes, but there's also, you see, what I thought was rather poignant, and I just wouldn't have expected from Malcolm, because Malcolm always, you know, a thoroughly nice man, but very, quite over-controlled in his way, saying that he didn't actually have a lot to do. You see, you know the Houses of Parliament, I know the Houses of Parliament. I, I remember once when I got irritated with, with, with somebody I was taking around talking about full-time MPs, knowing full well I wasn't one. And I said, OK, let's go meet a few full-time MPs. And I took them into the old Kremlin bar, and there they were, swilling away, although it was only early in the afternoon. The reality is that to be a backbench member of Parliament, if you've got a well-organised office, is not a full-time job. And sadly, there are a lot of well, people... Can't you make it a full-time job by... You know, doing more work for your constituents. I suppose, but then, you know, a lot of me, although I was r never a full time member of parliament, I had one of the lowest swings against me in 97 when I lost because we worked very hard. I found actually the constituency casework one of the most interesting things to do, and it's rather touching that people would forget about all the, uh, the problems of the yeah. government and stuff like that and vote. But I think what we come down to is we throw the baby out with the bathwater to resort to cliche. Sorry if I'm doing that. Mm. If we remove from members of parliament the right to do something outside because what when you get a breed of professional politician who of any real ability is going to want to do that you see for a lot of people they start in their career they if they go into parliament and five yeah. years later they're booted out that means their original career is going to be largely closed but to them. an MP's salary is in the top 10 percent in the nation shouldn't they be satisfied I, with that of course but we're often talking about future. And I, see, the most difficult thing to explain, and I thought where Malcolm, I couldn't believe this either, the day after, the night before, as it were, 
he suddenly talks about 60,000 not being enough. This is the truth that dare not speak its name, you see, because most of the people watching will not earn 60,000 and they'll think it's very cushy, particularly when all the expenses that we know find their way into the pockets of Member of Parliament's relatives. But the reality is, if you're as gifted as Malcolm Rifkin is, if he'd been a top QC, uh, well, we know what a top barrister earns because the second highest earner, yeah, Mr. Cox, uh, Mr. Cox, uh, 800,000. I mean, and so uh, the trouble is, I think, you get to the age and stage of Malcolm and you suddenly think, wow, what I've given up for politics. And he would be undoubtedly in the half a million to three quarters of a million okay. bracket. Yep. You know?